week 13, I'll bet you got some players that are pretty sore just to try and get through an NFL season. How important is it, though, that the 38-year-old quarterback says, I still want to play? Oh, I think that, yeah, it, well, it just speaks to how competitive he is and, um, you know, how much he's invested into this game, this team, and uh, regardless of circumstances. And that's what we kind of talk about our team all the time is competitive greatness, being your best when your best is required, regardless of the circumstance. And um, that's one thing you can always expect from him. Will he practice at all this week? Well, we'll take it one day at a time, but uh, I, I would anticipate yes. But not today. But not today. Now, what's been the, the biggest change in Christian's game that's allowed him to do what he's done besides just being able to stay on the field? Well, I think if you look at it, and it's just getting the experience, getting the reps in practice and in the games. Um, I think... Anytime you have a young player and they miss basically an entire preseason, they miss all the games, all the practices, there's going to be a learning curve. And I think you've seen it, you saw it uh, with a lot of our guys the COVID year when we had no preseason games. And his was even compounded, I would say, because he couldn't practice. And um, yes, we did have an off-season program, but it, it's... You have to get in there and get into the flow and get into the flow of a game. And um, there's things that come up in a game that you, you try to prepare for everything. But inevitably, people game plan and people make adjustments. And that's one of the uh, great things about our game is there's a lot of smart coaches out there that, that can game plan and try to give you a different look. Um, and I think until you get in those situations, I think it's... It's just all about the experience and the reps. What did Ada's gain show you over the last, what, six weeks or whatever it's been since he came back to get a spot in 53? Who? who? Ennis. Oh, Thump? I'm sorry, yeah. Wow. I, I had no idea what you said there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, we call him Thump, in case you were wondering. Uh, no, I think Thump is a guy that, you know, he's been around here for quite a while now, and I think any time you, you watch him, he, he always competes at – the best of his ability. He's got really great speed and physicality. And, um, you know, we're excited about him in, in terms of what he can bring, especially uh, to teams. But I, I also think that there's a future for him, hopefully. And, and if he continues to show the growth, uh, he, he, he possesses the athleticism that you look for. And he definitely has that contact courage and he's not afraid to get, throw his face, in, you know, in the fire, so to speak. And uh, but he's, he's got a great energy about him. And I think just the more he gets, uh, you know, in there playing, uh, you know, the more comfortable he'll get and the better he'll be. With where you're at in the season, are you, are you guys at a point where you want to start seeing more from, from younger players and, and, and more focus on developing what, what you have there, finding out what you have there on the roster? Well, I think we're always trying to develop and try to, look for opportunities to get some guys in there that you you might not know about. But I think right now the focus is total, is 100% is on winning this football game and doing whatever it takes. And that's always going to be the focus in, in my mind. So um, I know I'm not really answering your question, but uh, appreciate the question, Ryan. I guess it's still uncertain whether Justin will play Sunday for the Bears. But just how does he, when you look at his recent games on film, how has he kind of developed since – the last times, the last few times you've seen him. Well, I think first of all, I think Luke Getzey has done an unbelievable job, and it's not just him. Guys like Chris Morgan, their their old line coach, and you guys know how I feel about Luke. I think he is uh, is as bright as they come in this business, and I think he's he's definitely going to be a standing up and talking in front of everybody uh, as a head coach here, probably sooner than later. But I think they've done an outstanding job of just playing to his strengths. I think the guys around him are, are playing at a high level. I think, uh, you know, he's such a threat at all times with the ball in his hands. And he's an exceptional athlete uh, that is capable of breaking tackles and, and or making you miss. And, um, you know, I, I think obviously adding a guy like Claypool has been big for him too, although I know he doesn't have necessarily the production. But just having more players that are around you that – that have played at a high level. I, I think, you know, that 
tends to lead to better success for the quarterback. So I think it's 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 really everybody involved over there have done a really nice job, and uh, I think their offensive line is is vastly improved. I think over the course of the season. Are they doing anything differently without Smith and Quinn in the mix schematically? Um, maybe a little bit, but. Um, you know, obviously, those are those are two great players that that are very hard to replace. Uh, but I, I don't think that I think their scheme, what they do, they do very well in terms of. You know, there's not a lot of coverage bus or or bus on tape. Guys play their responsibilities, um, and they play with relentless effort, and they do all the little things the right way in terms of how they attack the football. Um, you know. Punch hammer rake. Uh, they get, they do as good as anybody. How much does the Bears' uncertainty at quarterback affect your game planning and, and preparation in general, especially with two different styles of quarterback? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, we'd be foolish not to plan for for Justin. You because if you don't, you will get, you will get gutted. Um, and you know he's just that that quarterback run game they have is is pretty spectacular, and it doesn't even always show up just in the run game, but even on, you know, his ability to drop back. And if, if nothing's there to pull it down and find a window and, um, or an escape, escape lane and, and make it pay in that regard. So I think, you know, we're going to have to have everybody in tune on the same page and you can't give this guy a sliver of light. Otherwise he will make you pay. So do you just figure you'll prepare for fields and, and adjust if it's different on the fly kind of, or? Well, I, I think you, you, I would say the majority of your plan is uh, directed toward him being in there. We, I, I think, um, obviously, with him not playing last week, you know, that's another week to get healthy and rest. So, um, you know, it's a guessing game, but I think you got to hedge your bet in that in that area. With, with the way Kurtz was sort of able to run on Sunday, does that force you to change your approach to prepare for? How you prepare for Justin? I think you got to look at yourself critically and and see if that plan worked or not. Um, and you know the the bottom line is, no matter what we have called, we have got to tackle first and foremost. And if you miss twenty two tackles or whatever we had um, charted, that's what we had. Then it's going to be a long day. So. We're going to have to get multiple hats at the ball because it's not only Justin Fields. Um, you know, they've got tremendous running backs as well. So I think it's collectively as a unit, you got to have multiple hats at the ball and you got to do a great job of, of not only grabbing cloth or, or finding ways to, to get a guy in the grass, whether it's a knife tackle or uh, what we call a roll tackle. Um, you got to have a great tackling plan and you got to have guys. We got to own our leverage, and know how to leverage the ball and where your help is at, instead of over pursuing maybe and allowing a cutback lane, and then there's nobody there. So if your leverage is to your right, you better stay inside out on the ball carrier and and let your help be to your right. Man, tell, tell me if I'm wrong, but early in the season, you guys didn't trouble with tackling much, right? I mean, it was pretty sound earlier in the season. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, yeah, I'd say yes. That came from Sunday night. You, I, mean, you, I know the Eagles play well, but you, you guys have done well against Josh Allen. Just had a good game against Derrick Henry. Where, where do you think the poor tackling came from? Yeah, that's that's again. I think it's all of that that I just talked about in terms of making sure that we we own our leverage and have people help you if you can't get a guy on the ground. So um, certainly that's going to be a, a main point of emphasis all week in in that regard to make sure that. Uh, we do we do just that. I guess what I'm wondering though, that that wasn't an issue much earlier in the season, and now it is now. So did something uh, did something change for that to regress? Your guess is is as good as mine because it's not like, you know, the the tricky part I would say in this league is, um, I have never been a part of a team that's tackled in season. I mean, you do drills every day uh, to to address that so that you don't take a step back. But unfortunately, and, and sometimes you got to give credit to whoever your opposition is. I mean, those, that's a good football team. And they've got guys that can make you miss and can, can hurt you. Um, 
but to miss that many, I just, you know, it was obviously very disappointing. And that's, again, you just got to, you get what you emphasize. And so we got to make a, a strong emphasis in that regard. And I just think that you got to have more hats at the ball too. And, and in case somebody does miss a tackle, that there's somebody there to clean it up. Man, just to clarify, is your expectation that Rodgers will play Sunday? Yes. 